Hey everybody, welcome back. And I saw this article and it just it just struck me as being really funny that we're living in the time where everything used to be great. Everything that we grew up watching was amazing. The 80s, the 90s, even the stuff that came before in the 70s. Yet it was all problematic. So as much as we all loved it and as much as people can look at it now as like an IP that needs to be modernized or reimagined for, you know, a quote modern audience, because, let's face it, nobody's creating anything worth talking about these days. Nothing new. There's nothing imaginative that's actually compelling people to go to the theaters other than a few one-offs here or there. So what they're doing is they're taking these properties that have existed for years that people love the original. I mean, to be honest, I can't think of a single reboot or prequel or like a reimagining of a film that I enjoy more than the original. But they're taking these original ideas, these things that would be problematic by today's standards, and they're remaking or uh, reimagining them for a modern audience. That's kind of the the kiss of death. Whenever they say that phrase, reimagining for a modern audience, you know the thing's gonna suck. And so I saw this article from Fandom Pulse here talking about how we have an upcoming sex swapped Conan, which is going to be a queer cringe fest. Their words, but it, when you go through the synopsis of the film, that's pretty much what it is. And the movie's called She Is Conan. And basically, the, the movie's full of non-gender conforming characters. They want to do away with female stereotypes. Conan exists as like six different women living in six different time multiverse eras or whatever. There's like the androgynous female demon dog person. Um, the whole thing seems really cringe. I, I think it's actually in French or a different language. But... This is just their way of saying, no, see, the original Conan is bad because he's a very masculine, macho dude, and you can't have that. You have to change things. And sure enough, this might not be the actual intent behind this, this next thing we're going to talk about, but you can guarantee there's going to be elements of this in here. And what I'm talking about is the new alien movie Romulus, which supposedly is supposed to be a prequel set between the first and second alien movies. And the synopsis here from Screen Rant says, Alien Romulus, Romulus is said to follow a, quote, group of young people on a distant world who find themselves in a confrontation with the most terrifying life form in the universe. And their tagline here is that the new Disney alien movie is moving away from the Ripley blueprint by using young characters. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I get that Sigourney Weaver was no spring chicken. Like, she wasn't 15, 18, 20 years old in the original, but she couldn't have been more than, what, 25 26 maybe maybe she was closer to 30 i don't know but the reality is what they're doing i mean they, they summarized in their article here on screen rant it says disney's new alien movie romulus is taking a different approach from ridley scott's original film focusing on a group of young people in a slasher in space scenario while this departure from the original may concern fans incorporating the teen slasher formula can potentially rejuvenate the franchise and appeal to quote modern viewers by leveraging uh, the strength of the action-forward slasher genre and featuring a relatable young cast, Alien Romulus has the opportunity to capture the magic of the original film and speak to audiences today. Because that's exactly what we need. We need Alien to speak to the young audiences. And honestly, there were problems with uh, Prometheus. There were problems with the, the prequel films that Ridley Scott tried doing. And in these articles from Screen Rant, they actually go on to talk about how it's a great idea to, to move in a younger direction and to move away from Ridley Scott's vision. And again, I am willing to admit and, and very blunt, honest that, yes, there were several of the alien films that sucked. OK, there were a few of the ideas that could have been done better and they were just crap. But I don't understand how completely like. Uh, you know, unhitching the wagon from the thing that's worked for all these years is going to instantly make it better because now you're doing something different, which is, quote, you know, younger and more modern. OK, they even had an article here saying nine reasons Alien Romulus is better than a Ridley Scott Covenant sequel. And again, you could list better reasons, but in this list, it's simply, look, we have much uh, younger, more relatable people now. A and this is the cast, in case you were wondering. If you see a bunch of checkboxes, you are correct. We've got one of each shade, uh, one girl, three, I'd say at least two and a half effeminate dudes, and an Asian-looking chick with a shaved head. I mean, literally, they, they just checked a bunch of boxes. I, I don't understand how Hollywood keeps doing this, thinking that this is the magic formula that's going to make money. 
when the reality is this is just a joke. And this person here, uh, Echo Chamberlain on YouTube said, the cast of the new Alien film. I know I'm going to hear their dialogue, see the beta male-ish Gen Z boys, and find myself rooting for the seething, malicious Xenomorph. I mean, that's true. You're going to end up making the audience not care when any of these people die. And honestly, root for the bad guy. I mean, if that's their intent, there you go. Good job. <laughs> well done, Disney. I don't know. You guys excited to see this? I was ready for Alien to be done after the last prequel one I watched. I mean, the, the franchise has kind of played out. It, the first two movies were fantastic. Some of the best movies ever made. I don't think we need any more, but let me know what your thoughts are down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching the video. We do have two channels, one for daily uploads, the other one for more of my live streams and hot takes. Uh, links to both are down below, as well as the ability to join as a channel member for as little as $3 a month, and that'll greatly help us out. Much appreciated. We also have links to our Etsy accounts down below, as well as our website. We also have Locals and Subscribestar. If you didn't want to support us on YouTube, you can support us through those. Thanks again for being here, and we will see you on the next one.